Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today I've got another gear review for you. From new rods, to new baits, to tackle storage solutions, and more. This should be fun. I'm excited about this one, and that should come as no surprise to you. You guys know how much I love gear. I love doing these gear reviews. They're some of my favorite videos because it's the culmination of getting to play with a ton of tackle. I love rods and reels, baits, gear, storage. I love all of it. And uh, these videos give me the excuse to go absolutely crazy hunting down new tackle. I'm constantly buying new gear, constantly on Tackle Warehouse, refreshing the new items page and then playing with all that stuff. We're constantly fishing with new equipment, testing new things to try and find those gems, those things that stand out from the crowd, and then we bring that to you. Now, not every item is brand new. Sometimes we review something that's been out for years, and that's going to happen today, but that typically happens because of something very special taking place, as is the case with this right here. We'll get to it. Let's start with rods, and then we'll, I mean, I just threw this stuff out here, but we'll just work our way across here. Uh, first one up, 13 Fishing's new meta series of rods. Uh, we've been hearing about these for what? Year, year and a half, it seems like. Uh, as soon as Gerald Swindle got on with 13 Fishing, I think we all knew something was in the works. Uh, but this is the result of all of that. And I've had a lot of questions about these rods. I mean, a lot, a lot of questions about the rods, a lot of questions about the reels. I need more time with the reel. So I'm not reviewing the reel today. And that's simply because most reels feel good out of the box. You've got to go out and really try to destroy them before you know for sure. So it just takes more time with the reels. The rods are easy. You know, you get a few rods, you go out, you fish as hard as you can, you put them through the paces, you boat flip fish that you shouldn't boat flip, you test sensitivity, durability, and then you've got a pretty good clue. But again, reels, they're harder. So specifically today, we're talking about the rod. The one that I've put the most time into, uh, I bought three of them, but the one I put the most time into is the 7.4 medium heavy. And that's simply because it was the most universal one for me. You can do almost anything with this rod, but let's talk specifics first. Detailing, graphics look great. Uh, I'm very impressed with the rod overall. I think it's a great rod for the price, extremely comfortable, uh, well balanced with a solid reel on it. Very well balanced. You don't notice weight whatsoever. I mean, very comfortable rods for the price. Uh, and overall, I've been extremely happy with it. Uh, sensitivity is right where I would expect it to be. The rods are solid. Again, my favorite model so far has been this 7.4 medium heavy, and you can do almost anything with that, right? That little bit longer rod, we've talked about watching for deflection. Uh, you can do that with spinning rods and casting rods. So that 7.4, I can really see deflection in that rod. Uh, it's been good for throwing flukes while I was I cheated a little. I was down in Florida, so I got ahead in the seasons, right? So flukes, top water, throwing small swim baits, throwing all sorts of stuff on this thing, flipping a light Texas rig, pitching a Senko around, uh, very good for all of those different things. All in all, I'm very impressed with the Meta Series. I think they did a really good job at a pretty affordable price for the everyday angler, uh, and that is good to see. Next one up, this is the Mega Bass Valkyrie World Expedition series of rods. Now we're, view we're reviewing this today, but you guys have actually seen these on our boats for a long time uh, because they were available in really limited numbers, I don't know, a, a year or two ago? I scooped one up, so I took this on a trip to California last year with you guys and whaled on fish. And it was 
I took two of them with me, but specifically this guy, the 6'8 medium, was a rod that really impressed me. So first thing you might be noticing is I'm, I'm building the rod, that's important. This is a travel rod. It is a four piece travel rod. Now when you assemble these rods, first thing you need to know is to do it properly, you insert you don't line them up perfectly and then insert them. You line up off center. So I turn my guides just a little, insert, and then you twist it and lock it straight. That's how you put them together so that they don't come back apart. These, and this one's all dirty from my last trip. So they come in a bag, a travel bag. And you guys, we've talked a lot about travel rods in the last few years. Uh, Mega Bass has another line of travel rods that we absolutely love. What I've really enjoyed about the World Expeditions is durability. I mean, look at the size of these double-footed guides, okay? That is something I look for all the way up. See, when you travel, it's one thing to want to carry a travel rod in the back of your truck so that you see a pond, you can jump out and fish it. That's awesome. And having a super durable rod to do that is great. But it's a whole nother ball game if you travel cross country or out of country to go on a trip somewhere and you've got a rod that you need to have work because, you know, a perfect example for us was a few years ago we went to Guyana in South America. Tim and I took very few rods on that trip. If those rods had broken, forget the rod, you're out the cost of the entire trip because now you can't fish. It's not like there's somewhere to go get another rod. So durability is everything in travel rods. So travel guys are constantly looking for better. The first thing I noticed when I first decided to buy one of these was double footed guides all the way up. These rods have proved to be super durable. I have put them through a ton of testing. It wasn't even intentional testing. I've taken them on a bunch of trips uh, and uh, just like I said at the beginning of this video, I was on Tackle Warehouse on the new items page and was like, oh my gosh, they've got the Valkyries now. I didn't even know that was gonna happen. So I quickly grabbed one of these, added it to the mix so that I could talk to you guys about it. Now, specifically this guy, this smaller 6'8 medium, I was mind blown by this rod the first time I used it. The reason why is it's a light enough rod that it can do almost anything. If you guys remember that Delta trip, we were blasting. I was with my buddy Ninja and we were blasting on crankbait fish, Senko fish, and then we were also fishing for striper. But those crankbait fish, I was throwing a little jackal crankbait, small trebles on this rod. Travel rods, most of the time, the actions are a little eh, and you just work with it. But both lines of Mega Mass travel rods have been just mind blowing to me. This rod loaded up so well, I didn't lose a single fish. And I caught some big fish on some little treble hooks. Very, very impressed with this setup. And then again, it's a four piece rod. If you're not familiar with these joints, you have nothing to worry about. Sensitivity is there, durability is there, no issues whatsoever. And then look, it breaks down to nothing. You can store it anywhere, you can take it on a trip, you can leave it in the back of your truck. Once in a while, I'll take one and just stick it in the back of my kayak. I, I put my big one in the back of my kayak in case I run into musky or I wanna throw a big swim bait, but I don't want an eight foot rod hanging out the back of my boat all day long. All right, next up, let's talk about this guy. This is the one I said has been out for years. Missile baits, bomb shots. We've all seen them. They're not new. They've been riding around in my boat or in my garage for years. I'm just gonna be blunt. In my hand, this worm does not impress me. I got them. I fished them, but I did not give them their fair shot. But in my hand, it just didn't speak to me personally. I don't even know why. It's a ribbed bait, flat tail, it looks good. It does. But there's a lot of baits that look good, right? So if something doesn't just leap out at you right off the bat, a lot of time, 
it goes by the wayside. Well, fast forward, we were doing some underwater work recently and one of these guys was in my lineup. I was packing, knowing I was gonna go out and try and capture some different bait actions underwater. Didn't realize I was going to run into a bunch of fish that wanted to eat said baits, but I wanted to compare a bunch of different drop shot baits. That was my initial plan. This is the Fishalicious color, by the way. Insane. It's like a clear smoke blended with an electric shad. Just an unbelievable color. Let's get to the punchline. Shot underwater footage, caught some fish on it while shooting underwater footage, got home, put it on the big screen to start editing, and my jaw just dropped. Just dropped. Once in a while, there is a bait that stuns you. In my hand, I mean, I should have given it a better shot than I did. In the underwater footage, I should have bought stock and missile baits if that was an option. I mean, unreal. The way this thing undulates under the water, it stands up flawlessly. Like that tail wants to float. And when you work it, the whole bait is like, like a ribbon rolling in the water and the fish were just clubbing it. This is a bait that I missed. I don't know how, I mean, I've owned them forever. I fished them. The times I fished them, I guess it just wasn't the right day. It didn't jive. When it finally jived, when I finally saw it, shocking. So take that for what it is. There are a lot of smaller style, minnow style drop shot baits on the market, uh, but that one is a shocking standout from the crowd. And again, if you're not familiar with these videos, in the video description, like you don't have to write down Fishalicious, okay? In the video description, if you're on a phone, you got to click the little dots. If you're down below, you push more. Uh, on, a, on a desktop, you push more. Uh, we spend a ton of time in the video descriptions below these videos. We will list every single item we're talking about in the order we talk about it, including favorite size, favorite color, uh, if there's rigging components involved, certain hooks, something like that, we include all that. And then all those links go straight to Tackle Warehouse so that you don't have to try and remember this stuff. If you didn't know that, the description oftentimes has more information than the video itself. In a video, we might say, oh, I'm using this bait. In the description, we give you the hook, the weight, all the things. Uh, all right, next one. Nishini. The finesse cover jig. You guys know we love that Nishimi, that little football. Very unique head, almost like an alien style head. Uh, very different from the rest, and I like different. So, again, I'm on that new items page, and I'm like, oh, Nishimi's got a new jig. Let me order half a dozen of those. This guy really stood out to me. So, the Nishimi jig, in general, very small, but heavy wire hook. This style of jig, I like, oh, it's raining all of a sudden. This style of jig, I like to refer to as a micro jig. That's what I call them. Uh, I love this head. It's, it's a, almost a ball head, but not quite. Very unique head, uh, very unique coating on that head. It's, a, it's like a rough coating on there. They use an extremely thin skirt, and then you can pair that up to a bunch of trailers. I throw like the Z-Man, uh, the TRD Bugs, the TRD Craws. This is a pack of chunk. I wish I had the smaller one with me, but just to give you a size reference, that's a pack of chunk going on there. I mean, just an awesome, super compact jig. Again, I love their football jig, but it doesn't have a weed guard. This is more of that ball style head with a weed guard with that same great hook. This makes this bait even more uh, adaptable. You can throw this on light line. Like you could set that hook with eight to 10 pound line, but you could throw it all the way up to 12 to 15 pound if you want to. Uh, but just an amazing downsized package. You guys know I love throwing finesse and micro jigs uh, 
over say small worms a lot of the time because I feel like when I cross paths with a big one, they're more likely to eat the jig. So again, that little Nashini has a weed guard, really good head shape, thin skirt. I'm very impressed with that one. And it, I mean, it's starting to really rain. So we're gonna pause for just a second and let this pass. This is why you always keep good rain gear in the boat. All good. Well, that was a soaking I wasn't planning on taking today. It's still raining, but it's, it's simmered down quite a bit. Hopefully we can power through the rest of this. Next bait up. This is the bait Sanity Tug. It looks like a glide bait, and it, it is, but it is much more than that. This is a very unique bait that completely jumped out at me. This is a few different things. It's a walking topwater bait. It's a subsurface walking bait, so a sub walk. You can even get this thing while walking to jump out of the water. It pains me that this bait didn't exist when I was chasing giant trout eaters in California all the time. The action of this thing walking on the surface and then you pump it with that rod and it jumps out of the water is unreal. Uh, there's a ton of design in this bait. There's a magnet in the back so this rear hook stays up and out of the weight. These fins are designed to absorb scent. Uh, it's got this very unique weight in the chin. Here it, it's loud. That's not just me banging on it. That's it rattling around inside there. But it's held in place by a spring and the ability for that thing to load and unload on that spring is basically how they're getting the action out of this bait. But it is a very, very unique design. Think giant walking bait. Think like punker style walking bait, but in a full fish profile like this is a dark bluegill comes in a bunch of great colors but you're getting a full walk out of this thing and then i spent probably a half hour learning the bait in the very beginning because you can work it slow completely on top you can work it faster and it'll get more of a sub walk going on i mean just below the surface and it'll break out of the surface in the corner of every turn so you're keeping track of it and then again, there's a way where you pump it hard in the turn and this thing, instead of just turning to come back, will turn and jump out of the water. It's, it's insane. Uh, it is not a budget bait, okay? This is a little bit more money, but I mean, for the swim bait guys, it's totally a budget bait. But for a guy who's used to throwing a regular top water, this is an expensive bait. But there's a ton going on here in a unique, full, profiled top water. Again, you guys know Tim and I released a wake bait last year. We're fanatical about our bait, but we are not close-minded. That's not going to be the only bait I ever throw. So when I saw this come to market, I immediately had to have it. Look at that hook just keeps hanging there. Perfect location, but still out of the way. Uh, again, a ton going on here, a bait I had to have. And the more I played with it, I fell in love with it. Those large walking top waters are fish catchers. And then this is a completely different profile than most of those baits. It's not sitting on the surface. It's cutting the water very different. The ability to do different retrieves with it, to get it to dip down a tiny bit is incredibly lifelike. If you throw big top waters, that is a bait that you need to take the time to look at because I've never seen anything else like it. Next one up, from Bill Lewis, the ATV line of crankbaits. There's a 1.0, a 1.5, there's also a 2.0. But for me, the 1.0 and the 1.5 are the sweet spots. Those are the sizes I like to throw the most. The ATV, I, I assume, stands for all-terrain vehicle. That'd be my guess, given what I've experienced with these baits. I try it almost everything new. Unless something looks completely ridiculous and I just know I'm not gonna like it, I buy most things. When I got these, I wasn't sure what to expect. Tossed them in the boat. They went into a box of things I plan on playing with, right? When they came out, started playing with them, 
Looks good. It's got a very subtle knock in it. So it's a rattling bait, but not a, not a loud rattling bait. Very, very subtle, a very controlled sound, a uh, tighter action than I would have expected out of the bait. A lot of that comes from the bill shape. So a really good cold water bait coming into spring. But where this thing really stood out is when I got it around wood. And once I realized how hard this thing was to snag, then it was like a game of where can I put this bait? I mean, I'm throwing it into the center of lay down. So, you know, you can walk a lot of crankbaits through standing timber or laid down timber. You throw into the logs, you start winding. When you start to feel it load up, you just pause. This bait has a pretty fast float, so it'll float up. Then you can keep going, start to feel it load up again. You pause, it'll float back out. You can walk a crankbait through really thick stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, I realized this bait didn't want to snag, so I was burning it straight through the logs, just grinding, not pausing, not letting it back out, and it came through that stuff like a dream. It is downright hard to snag it up. It comes with good triple grip trebles on it, nothing you need to upgrade. Straight out of the pack, you can fish it. If you're a heavy cover guy, if you are fishing shallow junk, I would even say for the bank guy, like the, the 1.0, you're talking about like a two to four foot diver. Here you're like a three to six. I don't remember what the big one is uh, because again, these are the sizes I really like. But that smaller one, a bank guy, uh, because it is so snagless. I mean, I'm not saying you're never gonna hang it up, but it doesn't want to hang up. So that's a bait that is a really good option for you as well, but a very unique bait Again, it's a rattling bait, but not an overbearing rattle. Uh, it lands right in the middle of my lineup. I throw some baits that are super obnoxious. I throw baits that are totally silent and I throw stuff in the middle, uh, but a really unique bait that will come through anything for you. They did a really good job with that one. Next up, shake all the water off this packaging. Yamamoto put out the Yamacraw. Most Yamamoto baits to this point have had pretty subtle actions. You know, a lot of curly tails, right? But now they've got a, a full profiled crawl, large kicking legs. So, I mean, a true, you want movement, you've got movement. Uh, a bait that you wanna fish in murky water, a bait that you wanna fish in the summertime when you want a lot of kick out of that crawl. But what I like about it is two things. One, Yamamoto colors. Two, Yamamoto plastic. This bait is soft. I mean, you can just ball this thing up, but it's still got that really good, strong swim to it. Uh, I like that bait. I think that was something Yamamoto needed to do. That is a reach out of typical Yamamoto into more of that core product that they didn't have. I think that was a good move. You already know what you get in a Yamamoto bait in terms of plastic, in terms of color selection. There's always great options. So I think that was a good move for them. All right, these last three, let's go here and then we'll go boxes. This guy, it's not the Plano box, it's what's inside of it. There's a reason I store it this way. You never know when it's gonna rain, right? All right, this is a no-co charger. And I keep all my cords and stuff in here and I don't want all that stuff rusting. That's why it's in there. But the NOCO charger, a NOCO boost, uh, obviously we're not all boat fishermen, right? I totally get that, but a lot of you are. If you're a boat guy and you don't carry some sort of a charging pack on your boat, you're gambling. But the reason this NOCO stands out, so I carry jumper cables, I used to jump myself from my trolling motor to my cranker if I had to, right? Uh, now I just carry them in case I need to jump somebody else and then I've already worn this thing out. I don't even know why I still have jumper cables in my boat, just habit. Uh, but my NOCO Boost has eliminated the need for that. There's a reason I'm specifically talking about this today, however. Most people know what jump packs are uh, or a charger pack. Your batteries die, you take this thing, Plug your cord in. There's your short little your little jumper cables. 
you can start your engine. You can run cameras off of this thing. You can charge your phone off of it. You can start your outboard. You can start a lot of cars with this thing. Here's the most important feature. And I think almost everybody overlooks this. A lot of guys have gone to lithium batteries in their boats. Tim and I have, we've been doing it for years. A lot of you have too. You know the issue with lithium is that those things can shut themselves down and lock out. And that battery goes to zero, boom, it goes to sleep. If that happens, a smart charger can't even see that the battery exists. So you can't wake it up. It takes an old school charger or a lithium charger to even acknowledge that the battery is there. Cause all it takes is a shock of electricity and that battery turns back on, you're back to 100%. You're a tournament guy, one of your batteries goes to sleep, you're done. All you need to do is have the ability to wake it up. I didn't realize when I first started carrying these, here, let me power it up, ready to jump, I got my green light. If I push and hold this button, this stops being a smart charger. Now this thing is an old school charger and it will zap that battery whether it knows it's there or not. When I realized that this pack could jump my lithiums out of sleep, I have one in my boat, my wife's boat, Tim carries one, all my buddies carry them. It's, it's everything because I literally used to carry an old school charger in my tool set just in case. It's not like it happens every day, but it can happen to you in adverse weather and it's a trip killer. And that one little button push solves all of that. If you don't carry some sort of a booster pack, you should really think about it. So wanted to include that one for you. I've been meaning to talk about that in a video for a while. Why not today? Two more for you. We'll go with this one. We'll end with this guy. This is the Busby box. And this is their deep box, okay? <laughs> Jackal TN Lipless. Let me get some of the water off of here. This is their Colony 28 Deep. I've been playing with the Busby. So I got my first box at least a year ago. Then I got uh, a bag to travel with. Then I got a bunch more boxes. Then I got a second travel bag because I, so they're travel bags, completely waterproof. They hold a bunch of these boxes and on my jet boat. So I say it's my travel bag. That's how it started out. When I got a second one, they became my jet boat tackle solution because my jet boat has no tackle storage whatsoever. I keep my tackle in two bags on deck. Uh, so those completely waterproof bags, I mean waterproof, are amazing. But let's get back to this. The Colony 28 Deep. So these are really neat boxes. They're completely over-engineered. They're built out of a super strong high-end material. Not the same stuff you see in every box. Okay. I've told you guys a bunch that I'm fanatical about the Jackal Lipless, right? I mean, you know that, not a secret. The TN70, the TN60, as well as the little guys, the TN50s. I'm gonna let you look in this box. Now you can see I'm low on some colors because I throw the fire out of these. But this is my TN box. This is the one I was crushing them on all fall. That's why I'm all stocked up on them. I bought a bunch more. But these guys, these come out. You can completely rearrange the box. So you can buy these in like a single, this is a double, a triple, a four. So I could have rows in here. I could have them go this way. I can mix, say I've got a bunch of little guys and I want a square for that. I could buy a square, take two of these out and drop a square into that spot. The other thing I can do is when I'm you guys see me building day boxes all the time, right? Tim and I are gonna go fishing. We don't know what we're gonna face. I grab one of these, one of those, one of those. A lot of times now I'm like, oh, I need that one. And this goes and drops into the other box and then I can just bring it right back. But again, an overbuilt, super smart way 
to store your baits. You can rearrange in any shape or fashion. I could take two of these out, drop a long one in, and throw an S waiver in this box, right? I can completely mix and match. And then again, completely waterproof. They are completely durable, solid as can be. I'm very impressed with those. And again, I like those deep boxes. I like deep boxes and I like thin boxes because the deep boxes I can pack stuff into. Thin boxes, you don't waste any extra space, right? Uh, both really good options. Last but not least is this guy right here. You guys know we're fanatical about A-Rigs. Absolutely love them. But storing A-Rigs can be a nightmare. It is a nightmare for everyone. Every time you see us using an A-Rig, it seems like you see us trying a new storage solution. On the boat, all I do is I take one of my rod sleeves and I use the long one and I run it all the way down and over that rig and it pins that rig flat. But when I'm traveling or when I'm running with spares, this is the best solution I've found so far. This is Tackle Warehouse's own A-Rig storage. Check this out. So this thing has four slots in it and each slot has a tube. Fully rigged, ready to rock. Standard bladed. That was also a standard bladed. Another one. What do we have here? There's two in there. There's a mini flex, completely rigged, ready to rock. And then another mini flex, ready to be rigged. Let me pull this out of here. So as soon as I pull it out, it opens up. That's a full tactical mini flex, non-bladed. And I, again, I just squeeze it, put them in. And then I pull my hooks tight, get them in. And then I give it a little tap and it's done. Put that cap on. Now in this case, I wanna get the second one back in. So I'm gonna come, come from the other end. Take that guy, squeeze it, slide it down in there. Put that cap on. No fuss, no mess, no problems. And I'm carrying five A-Rigs ready to rock on the boat done that's the best solution i have found so far for storing rigs because you know it can be a nightmare all right i i think we made it through it with again with these videos i'll link everything in the video description for you i hope this is helpful uh, i'm sure it is we go through a ton of gear looking for those gems looking for those standouts things that are unique things that will help you catch more fish without breaking the bank or a bait that is pricey but is totally worth it so you're not out there wasting time and money. Again, we'll link everything in the video description so if something jumped out at you, you can find it. I appreciate you guys watching the video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.